Alright, what's up everyone, Pathfinder here, and today I'm going to be doing 10 things every Killing Floor 2 player should know. Let's get right into things. Okay, the first thing, shooting Zeds in the head. Now, this should be very logical, shooting Zeds in the head, and I still come across some hard plus servers where people just don't shoot for the head. I don't actually know why, but every Z has a weak point, and the weak point is always going to be the head, so... I'm going to show you here what happens when you don't shoot for the head versus what happens when you do shoot for the head. Not shooting for the head usually means that you're probably going to die in like the first wave. Doing headshots will not only mean that you kill Zeds faster, but you also stand a better chance to complete any match you play. There are a lot of perks that require you to be as accurate as possible, such as the sharpshooter or the gunslinger. Uh, but when you're playing the demolitionist, for example, you will still do more damage if you whack a rocket in, let's say, a flesh bounce face. Remember, headshots are the key to victory. The second thing is parrying or blocking an incoming attack. And this is probably the most useful feature in the game. A lot of people, believe it or not, don't even use this, not even for the Berserker. Now, parrying should be mostly used on the Berserker, but it could be used for any other perk, just because if you block an attack, you take less damage from, from the Zed that's hitting you, and you are going to stumble him back most of the time. In order to do a successful parry, you need to know when each Zed starts its attack, so right before he will hit you, you need to press the parry button. This could be quite hard to understand to like a beginning player, but in time, if you practice enough, you are going to nail it and you are going to have a fun time with your Berserker. I can't really teach you on how to parry. The best thing you can do is start a solo match and leave a couple of Zeds behind and parry their attacks. You will slowly get used to it and maybe it will save your life someday. As I said before, the Berserker shines when it parries, and not just because it has all melee weapons. It's because of the level 15 skill, which is called Parry. And the description for that is... Parrying with a perk melee weapon reduces incoming damage 40% and increases both melee attack speed 5% and melee damage 35%. For 10 seconds. So what this means is that you get more resistant, you attack faster and you do more damage for 10 seconds and you can parry over and over and over again so you're pretty much unstoppable. Well parrying in this game is very very useful. I highly recommend to everyone that you get used to it and try it out. Alright now we have bashing. Now, people usually forget about bashing, most only use it for when clouds grab them. But bashing in this game can be a real life savior. And why you ask? Well, bashing a Z causes him to stumble back, allowing you to shoot him. A well placed bash can even blow a low tier Z's head clean off. I saw a lot of cases where people are alone versus a lot of clouds or crawlers or something behind them. They usually go in a corridor and get surprised by a scrake or a flesh bound coming from the exit. And what do they do, you ask? Well, they give up and eventually die in that corridor. Now, what can you do to prevent that? Well, the only thing you need to do is bash whatever's coming from the exit. And when you bash, the Z will stumble back and you have a clear pathway to run away from them. This tactic doesn't only apply for corridors though, you can even just, if you want to get past something like something like a scrake or a bloat, you can just bash him and he will stumble back and won't be able to attack you. Bashing in this game is a very useful feature and is highly recommended in every circumstance you come across, so be sure to bash as much as you can and even if you don't feel like bashing then still bash, just bash all over the place. And sometimes if you don't even have ammunition, you can still chop clots or little, little tier Z's heads off cleanly just by bashing them. Now, this is something that I personally know that a lot of people have no idea on how to do. Or some people just don't even know that this existed, so here we go. Reload cancelling. Now, reload cancelling in this game can be done with every single weapon. Now... The benefit of reload cancelling is that you can shoot faster than you otherwise would, and here is how. 
Now, once you hit reload, you need to look at your ammo on the bottom right hand corner. Once it's refilled, bash, then start shooting a split second later. And that's it. Easy. You can cancel this reload when the gun is empty or not. You just need to look at the HUD to see when the gun is refilled. Now to get the hang of this, you need to practice and practice and even more practice. Because if you don't practice enough, you are just going to look stupid while doing this. So I recommend practicing this before using it. By now everyone knows that you can quick heal. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can reduce the time it takes to heal just by switching back to your gun. Now here we saw what a lot of people do, they just let the animation go till the end and when the game manually switches back to their gun, they shoot. Here we saw the cancelling of the healing animation, you still heal and you switch back to your weapon significantly faster than you would if you were to let the animation go through the end. In order to do this, wait until you see the blue effects on the corners of your screen and then immediately switch back to the gun you want. Now the benefit of doing this is that you go back to shooting as soon as possible. And that's quite mandatory for a fast paced game like Killing Floor 2. And I personally don't think that this is considered as a bug. If Chirpoir didn't want this in the game they would have tweaked it by now I think. Alright, the next thing is sound, believe it or not. It helps you to hear where all the different Zeds are walking and coming from. And I don't know if this tip should be here because I think this is very self-explanatory, but a lot of people listen to music while playing this game and can't hear where all the Zeds are coming from. But hey, I'm not telling you on what to do and how to listen and how to play this game, but... A lot of more hardcore players will even have in-game music disabled just so they can hear different Zed's positions. Here I will be covering two things, the medic pistol and the stay with your team part. I had many cases of players not sticking together, and that always results in a loss. Sticking with your team is the most important thing you can do when playing online. It gives you the best chance of winning. Now a match is lost 100% if your teams separate from each other. When this kind of stuff happens to me, I just pick the Berserker and play as a Lonely Wolf. And I don't really like doing this, to be honest. I recommend picking the perk that the team is missing. For example, we have two commandos, a Firebug and a Berserker. While the Berserker can handle big Zeds, it's always good to have more firepower on the team. That's why I went for the Demolitionist here. I could also go for the Medic, but I felt like we had a good enough team that doesn't need one. If the team doesn't have a medic then it's up to everyone to heal each other. That's why you see me here with the medic pistol. Almost every perk can carry the medic pistol with no problem. I really wish that everyone would know this because if they did, playing matches would get a lot easier. And you don't even need to use your medic pistol just to heal your teammates. You have something in your inventory called a med syringe. You can even go up to a player and heal him that way. And if you do that to each other then the medic syringe will recharge double the speed. What really pisses me off is the fact that players flee when they see something big approaching. A lot of people run away from let's say a flashbound without even trying to show them. The result is the player dead and there is nothing you can do to save him because he left all the little zeds behind that are on you now. On top of that the same player calls everyone out for not helping him and then leaves shortly after. And please don't be that guy, just help out the team and stay with the team till you all die or you all succeed. The last thing that we have right here is carrying your games. I get into these situations a lot in online games, usually because my team are not coordinated or just downright bad. But sometimes even the most skilled players can mess up somewhere, so I'm not the one to blame here. The only thing you need to know about carrying your games is to believe in yourself. Sounds cheesy, I know, but it's true. A lot of people can't handle the pressure and they just give up. Some perks require more skill to carry games while some don't. It also depends on that. The other thing is to know the map layout so you know where to run. But the most important thing is for you to not start and panic. Alright, these were my top 10 things that every Killing Floor 2 player should know. And I had a lot of fun making this and I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it like a bit useful at least. I mean, that's what I'm hoping for, I guess. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you have any of your own. 
uh, like tips and tricks, then be sure to leave them in the comments. And yeah, until next time, see you guys.